another edition of the Eternal Spirit Show with me, Paul Salmon, and with me today is spiritualist medium, Christina Green. Hello, good, good morning. It is a good morning. Yeah. Lovely to see you again. Lovely to see you. Because we, did, you. No, we, we met on my radio show, mm -hmm. which is, but now they can all see you. And Paul, me. Yes. <laughs> Paul, then. Now, I introduced you as a spiritualist medium. Yep. Does that suit you? I mean, there isn't a definition, is there? Some say psychic medium. I believe that I'm a spiritualist medium. Yeah. I'm a mediator for spirit. Yeah. Um, I don't like the word psychic because it's not psychic to me. Mm. It's mediumistic. I just think a lot of public tend to know what psychic means more than spiritualist, but, but I, I prefer the term spiritualist medium. Yep, absolutely. So too. That's who we are, folks. Now, Christina's written a book. They're only a breath away by Christina Green. Is that you on the cover? That it must that be you. Is, it's I mean, me it's about you, isn't girl, it? Yeah. So tell us what the book's about. It's my biography um, from when I was a child. It started all when I was a child. Um, I suppose about 18 months old. Mm. And I was actually resuscitated because I was very sick. Mm. And, uh, and on the third time, they said to my father, there was nothing more they could do for me. And my dad wouldn't give up. Wouldn't mm. give up. Mm. So he kept saying, please don't stop trying. <clears throat> And then I took a, a breath. Oh, hence the title. Absolutely. I took a breath. And uh, when I came, as I came back, mm. I came back a different girl altogether. Mm. A little girl that went to Spirit um, was quite bright, walking at 10 months, potty trained, actually by sort of about 12, 12 months, quite yeah. early. Yeah. Um, but when I came back, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even walk. Could you? No. But what I did come back with was my friend. I'm saying couldn't you, but I've read it twice, <laughs> so I do know this, what's in it. So t tell me a bit, a bit It more goes through, as I said, it goes through my life as a child, mm. um, right the way through. Um, I used to have a, a nun used to visit me, mm. and she used to come to me at night, yeah. and um, I used to, she'd tell me stories, things that was going to happen, and one of the saddest things was she told me that my dad was going to go away, mm. and so I used to cry, and my dad used to come into my bedroom, sit on the bed, and uh, I'd say, don't leave my daddy. And he said to me, I'd never leave you, I'm mm. not going anywhere. But in fact, he did, he died. Mm. Uh, I was 12 years old when he passed the spirit. Um, and it was unexpected because he was unwell, but he wasn't sort of like, didn't go to the doctors, mm. didn't see anyone. And uh, we was on holiday. And he collapsed on holiday and rushed into hospital. Mm. And um, when he got into hospital, he was actually hemorrhaging, bless his heart. Mm. And they kept him in for a little while, took him down to operating theatre, opened him up, closed him up, sent him home. Mm. And he came home April the 5th, literally a day before my 12th birthday. And I remember him saying to me, what a horrible birthday it is for you. Mm. But, you know, I was quite a grown up little girl and I used to say, Dad, it was the best present just to have you home. Yeah. But he lasted 10 days and he died. But this book goes a lot further than just your dad, doesn't it? Oh my God, yeah, it goes right the way through, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, right in the beginning with my uh, seeing the spirit, this is my visitations used to come, yeah. premonitions used to see things, used to tell my family about the things. But as I said, the most, the deepest memory of me was actually my father yeah. because of being told that he was going to leave me. And that made me. a big impact on your life. Oh my God, I, uh, yeah, of yeah. course it did. Yeah. I mean, it was frightening because every time I had a visit, I always yeah. think something else bad was going to happen, yeah. you know. Well, I must say, I've never read a book like this, I must admit, and I've, I've read it in one sitting mm. from the beginning to the end. And I don't want to say, I don't know if I enjoyed it or not. I, I must have enjoyed it to carry on reading mm. it. But like, it starts off with a bit of bad news, and yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say too much about the book, go and buy it yourself. <laughs> but it's tragic. Mm. Let's just say it's difficult. I don't want to say bad. Mm. But it starts off difficult from page one, if you like, and it carries on. And why I kept reading it is I felt like I got to know you in your book. And I wanted to see some good news, if you like. Yeah. And I wanted to encourage you. Come on, Christina. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it went from difficult to tragedy. It went from literally from after my father passing yeah. to going even further downhill. Yeah. Uh, my mother um, was an alcoholic mm. and um, as the day, the day I was born she used to say you know literally she didn't want me. She didn't want me. Oh, no I found that hard to read She didn't to want read, me. She wanted boys because she lost her son literally 15 years before me mm. and funny it's like I was an accident and I think she was hoping that her son mm -hmm. would come back because mm. I was a girl 
ankles. I was told, I've got an elder sister and who told me the story that my father was whitewashing their kitchen. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the phone call came, because those days they went at the hospital and saying that my mother had a girl, my father actually turned to my elder sister and said, Mum's not going to be very happy. No. So but even from the time I was walked into this world, you know, it was like, Shh, you know, she's not going to be happy and life is going to not be that good for me. No. Um, but as I said, I did have my spiritual friends, which uh, I think they actually kept me quite sane. We'll talk about those in a minute. Mm. But what, what made you write the book? Because I wanted people to realise out there that I understand how they feel and some and the pains they've gone through mm. and also the feeling of loss that I've also suffered myself mm. uh, and in a way I suppose I'm still 12 years old because my father is still very very deep past me mm. um, and I just really wanted to get people to read this get to know the real Christina and what she's really all about mm. because people look at me and straight away think oh, you know she's had an easy life or you know not a hard life Many times people said to me and looked at me and go, you must have had an easy life. In fact, until they read the book, they would understand I haven't. Well, working as a medium, or speechless medium, you pass messages on from those who, mm -hmm. to people on the earth. Um, you can now empathise, can't you? There's so yeah. many people, mm -hmm. and they do get an understanding about how you can empathise mm -hmm. and about your background. Mm -hmm. And how long did it take you to write? I suppose from, um, I would say roughly about a year. Mm. literally about a year because um, putting things together I'd write like little tiny things down in a book just odd, odd things and sort of stuff so it was sort of over the time I thought well it's now time actually to do something about it because I really wanted people to know me mm. well I've got to know you yeah. Yeah. Um, now I'm, instead of mentioning it at the end of the show mm. let's mention it now how can the people get a hold of your copy of the book? Well, you see, I am a, a spiritualist medium. Yeah. I am a church medium. That's my main thing. Yeah. Um, I do take my books with me when I go to the churches, so they can also pick one of the churches, or um, they could actually email me, And because uh, it's not in the bookshop. You have got a website? Yes, I have, but I'm, I'll be honest with you, I can't remember. <laughs> I'll tell you what to do. Just yeah. type in a search, Christina Green, spiritualist medium. Yeah, that sounds a good no, idea. Find it. Yes, or get so in touch with me at Felix Toad TV. Yeah, as it so, and then um, maybe sort of go through PayPal or something yeah. like that, and I will send it to them. Tell me how you was it your granddad's grave you found? Yes, I did. Just yeah. tell us that bit. Well, that's interesting. My, my grandfather again. I didn't know my grandfather. I knew nothing about my grandfather. But again, from a small child, I used to have this dream. It was a reoccurring dream over and over again, mm. and it was visiting a hospital with the old green doors and the cow corridors. And in my dream, I would like end up going to one main door, which must have been the office at that time, and then finding, well, just walking around the hospital. Yeah. And then one day, it was years later, um, I had a looking for a telephone number in, in a book, and I found this number it was a family, and again, it was one of these things. And my sister called them up as well, and we sort of went to a funeral. Mm -hmm. And at the funeral, my grandfather was mentioned. Now, my father never spoke about my grandfather. It was like, shh, you know, hush, hush sort of thing. And of course, the name was mentioned. Yeah. So I've gone home, and again, it's, it's got to be spirit. I've gone in the yellow pages and, and looked for a hospital in Epping and headed to there, telephoned them, and they looked in the, the old archives and said, yes, we did have um, mm -hmm. this gentleman here, you know? So I said, could I come and see you? She said, well, she said, probably haven't got any of the records. I need to come and see you. So my elder sister and myself went along to the hospital. As we got to the hospital, I said to my sister, it's this way. Mm. She said, well, how do you know you've never been here before? I said, I have. <laughs> I have. I said, in my dream, I know every corridor, every doorway. Mm. And as we went around the corner, I said, this is where the office is. And as we walked in, there was a, um, the, the, a nurse or whatever you call a sister. And she said to me, um, you must be grieving or you must be something or other, you know. So I said to her, no, it's, it's a dream and I need to find my grandfather. My older sister said, she's in love with a ghost. Mm. It's been a part of me for so long. So of course, she must have thought I was a nutcase. She's found actually the vicar mm. and, uh, of the hospital. He's come along and uh, he's sat down with me and he's trying to start, say to me, you know, oh, I've just had a baby, that was it, I've just had a baby. So I was sort of going through all these hormone changes, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I know where my grandfather's buried. And he looked at me and he said, if you know, he said, 
I'll get in, get in the car with me. He said, we'll drive around and you tell me where to stop. Of course, it was all these open fields and we're driving around and I went, stop, stop, stop. I said, he's there. Mm. And he went, oh my God. He said, that's the old burial ground. Now, there's nothing there. It was just a field and two trees. Well, in my dream, I also saw these two trees. Uh -huh. The two trees. Yeah. So I knew that's where he was. So he got out, across the field, literally, he said a prayer, and um, he said to put him to rest, but to me, as I said, you know, yeah, yeah. sorry, but I, I don't believe in that, you know, the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said a prayer, and uh, that was about it, really. But I found my grandfather. Fascinating. Mm. You just knew, didn't you? Yeah, I, I knew where he was. Yeah. But as if the dream stopped then and everything, so in a way, I was a little bit like he was calling me, yeah. he needed me to go there him, yeah. because his own life was very sad my grandfather yeah. he was put into um, a mental home bless him but it was because he was having epileptic fits and if you go back to the time when he was you know, his age you know they didn't know anything about it no. so he used to stick him away yeah. and he didn't have any visitors or anybody so it was quite sad growing up as a child being a rare spirit could you talk to your parents about it no well, as I said, with my father, he, it was good because yeah. I used to say to him, I had this nun used to visit me and she used to tell me this. He never poo pooed it, he never. Yeah. But my mother would like, oh, for goodness sake, you know, I used to sort of. Did she shut you away somewhere? That, that was, no, that was when I was a little girl when I used to have what she used to call fits and stuff like that. Right. They work fits. Yeah. She used to be so horrible sometimes that I used to have blackouts, yeah. literally. And like, well, she said I'd hold my breath and, and stuff like that. And I'd, and she, her way of doing it was just to put me in the cupboard, yeah. shut me away, or down the basement, yeah. out, just to shut me up, you know. Um, but but she also used to, well, I ended up seeing a psychiatrist because she thought I was a nutty because mm. I see these people. Mm. But did you have anyone to talk to about them, about your, your visitation? I used to talk to my younger sister, yeah. Linda. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, it was my Lou, as I used to call her, my Lou. Yeah. Um, we used to talk about all sorts of things, like, did your nun visit you tonight? And, you know, or oh, can't find my shoes, could you ask your nun where my shoes are? Mm. So, very close to my sister. I want to move my on. Best friend. Let's move on to your work, mm. because you work in churches as a spiritualist medium. How long, have you, how, how long has it been going on? Okay, well, the thing is, it was only till after my sister's passing, my yeah. younger sister's passing, that I decided to go along to a spiritual church. Yeah. Um, though I knew my sister was around me, but I needed also, like any medium, we know they're there, but it's also nice to have a little message. Mm. And I was in, in my home, and I was in the, the, sort of the dining room area, and I was sitting there, and I asked Lou, I said, are you here with me, Lou? And all of a sudden I felt an arm, like a really warm touch on an arm, so I knew she was there, but I mm. thought, she needs to tell me something she needs. So I went along to a spiritual church. Mm. As I went in the spiritual I sat down, and there was an elderly gentleman sitting to the side of me, and there's a medium, and she's going along, and she's talking to people. And I said to her, I said, why isn't she talking? And mentioning the child that's sitting with her. Mm. And he looked at me, and he said, there's no child there. I said, there's a child sitting with her. And in the next breath, the medium turned around and said, oh, by the way, you have a young boy sitting with you. Mm -hmm. And I knew straight away, like, this is my calling. This is where I was supposed to be. And, and, it was, and after that, it was like, since Lou went over, mm -hmm. she was saying to me, come on, you know, when we were, I was here, you used to tell me things, premonitions, things was going to happen. She used to push the phone out. Mm -hmm. And she said, it's time for you to work. Or she used to say to me, have I heard from mum or dad, you yeah. know. And then I started, I joined a circle. I was in that circle for about four weeks. Explain what a circle is. Okay. For those well, who don't know. It's, it's for people, you know, like if you feel that you have sort of a psychic links or, yeah. or a connection, they're going to, you go into a circle and you're try, they try to help you connect to the other side. So it's a group of like-minded people yeah. get together to... Yeah. To, to interact sort of thing, you know, yeah. meditation and stuff like that. Yeah, to connect to the spirit world. Yeah, yeah. Um, but because not everybody does. No. I mean, it's, you know, but it's, it's nice, it's a feeling of, of a get-together, as you say, mm -hmm. uh, people of the same sort of mind. Yeah. But <laughs> I wasn't, they, they sort of, um, how can I put it, I was chucked out. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yes, um, because I, I never followed the teacher. Right. And used to go around the circle and they used to say, okay, you know, what have you seen? And somebody would go, oh, I've been flying around the sky, I'll be doing this, or I've been doing that. I was supposed to follow the teacher. Well, I didn't. As soon as it came to me, I said, so Christina, um, what did you see? And I'd go, oh, um, I saw a man called Peter. She went, you're not here to give messages. Mm. So I said, well, I can't help it. And of course, that, well, back up, I think, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Um, so in the end, what she did, she put me on a test. She got a medium to come in and 
a well-known sort of medium come in and sit me in a circle, actually in the middle, blindfolded me, put somebody stand behind mm. me and then um, use their voice but then she would go over somebody's head and go like that. And I couldn't see them because I'm blindfolded and it's all going on behind me. And she said, her voice would say, so I've got somebody here, they're not going to talk to you. She said, I'll say yes or no for you. And she said, um, and they will tell you, uh, and I will nod if you're correct. Can you give them a message? So I saw this lady, and I saw quite a cuddly lady, curly hair, and I said, oh, I've got a lady here, mum, she's saying mum. And I said, she said, you put a rose on her grave today. Of course, the person behind Nordi, so the, the, the medium, the, the sort of famous medium, turned around and said, they're saying yes, they're saying yes. So I took my blindfold off and then stuck me to the advance. Oh, right. Straight from a little beginner, four weeks straight to the advance. But again, I didn't, I didn't stay in the advance because um, I was asked by a, a medium, yeah. a full-time medium, if I would accompany them on a, uh, to a church service because yeah. I didn't have a car. So, and it took off from there. Yeah. But you live in Kent, don't you? I do. Do you work where, so people can come and see you? Mm -hmm. Let's start again. Whereabouts do you work? All over the country? Uh, well, I'm not all over the country because I'm um, at the moment, as I said, it's churches and centres, business yeah. spiritual work. Most of my work is Kent and Essex. Yeah. I've recently sort of um, headed. Suffolk and, yeah. uh, and into Norfolk, so yeah. I'm, I'm still a baby, if yeah. you understand me. Yeah. Um, but hopefully, and pray. That well, let's get you known in Phillipstone anyway. No? And start working here, and um, you have a website. What about, have you worked abroad? Never. 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 Would you like to? I hope so in the future. I've yeah. got travel with you. Oh yeah. Being a medium myself. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Is that a holiday we booked? Oops. Sorry. Oh, it? oh well, that's <laughs> it. Oh, anyway, I'm moving on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how do you work? You, you see, because mediums, mm. if you didn't know at home, mediums work in different ways. Um, how do you work? You, you obviously see. I see, I hear, I feel. And you feel. What, mm. what do you feel? How do you feel? Uh, like if they come through and they pass with a heart attack, yeah. I feel like chest pains, yeah. or I can't breathe. If yeah. it's cancer, this is the funny thing, if it's a cancer passing, it always affects my throat. Always. Does it? Yeah. So I have like a... a sort of a croaky foot, I'll clear my throat, mm. so I know that it's a cancer passing. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing is emotions, like if that person um, was quite an emotional person, mm. or if it was a suicide, it's, it's to do with the feeling of, of them. Mm. Not, you don't understand yeah, what I'm yeah, trying yeah. to say, you know, yeah. and that's what I say by feel. Now you work in churches, but do you do private readings as well? I do. I, I have I have done a lot for the churches. I do private readings for the churches and bits yeah. and pieces. And I'm hoping, as I said, as time goes on, I'm going to be more um, doing as a private one to one. Yeah. What's the biggest crowd you've not played to? You don't oh. play to a crowd, do you? It's a congregation or uh, at, the, at the moment, it's 160. Uh -huh. Would you like to work in a big theatre? Like some mediums do. Yeah, in the future. Hopefully. You haven't done it, Felix. Though you know the yeah, Spark Pavilion. Yeah, yeah. I am. I am me. Yeah. Um, and you know, I will never change. Mm -hmm. So because I, my feeling, is I'm here to help people. Yeah. Uh, and it'd be nice if I do the theatre, but I'm not here, as I said. You're not here as an act actress, a performer. You're here as a to to show about life. To, Absolutely. To, what's the word? to prove Absolutely. life after life. If, yeah, if I can, so. as I said, if I can make one person happy, yeah. you know, you've done your job. I've done you? my job. So I'm not really looking as for fame, no. but I even if something did take off, mm -hmm. to me, my first priority will be the people. There's no doubt about that no. in my heart. No. You know? I mean, going back to your book, it's quite, it is an honest book. I don't think I could write it. I, I don't think I could let everyone know about my details. Yeah, I understand. I needed to do it. It yeah. was something I needed to do because my feelings are said. I was given this, okay, mm. and and I have also forgive me. It's not been the ease of life. I've suffered, mm. um, and I really want to, to tell people, you're not alone. That's the most important, mm. you know. Spirit world are with us, but it's not just that. You're not alone, emotional, physically. Mm. I, I I honestly do understand. And it's like, you know, if you've, I know you're, you're a man, but if, you, there is a, if it's a midwife, <laughs> it's like if you're a midwife, yes? And, yeah. and they've never had children. Yeah. 
or, or uh, uh, healthy stuff mm. then they're very children but they're trying to tell you how to, to yeah, ha yeah, look exactly. after children yeah. so to me I can understand what you're going through and how you're feeling mm. and that's why I wrote the book to get to know the real Christine the Green not the Christine and you know. right. so you don't mind me mentioning the self-harming not at all that you write about mm, not at all okay why did you do self-harm as a child yeah. um, I was so fair enough because I couldn't deal with emotion because everybody else was around me was hurting me yeah. so um, I'd hurt myself and, and this is one of the biggest again one of my charities mm -hmm. that uh, for the Samaritans because again it's taboo it's, it's like people don't talk about it mm -hmm. or, or there's something wrong with her she's sick or you get shouted at for doing it mm -hmm. now yes um, self-harming um, has been a very big part of my life. My own sister committed suicide. Mm -hmm. She was a self-harmer too. Um, so, it, yes, it, it's so... No, I'm not worried about it. No. I, I would t speak and say to anyone, yes, you know, I have self-harmed and, you know, it's to deal with emotions. Mm -hmm. I can't hurt you. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hurt you. And if I felt I hurt you, hurt you mm -hmm. then the person I, I feel I have to take it on myself I have yeah. to punish myself mm -hmm. but again I still think that stems from as a child because a lot of my life was innocent and I'd be blamed for things yeah. being alive yeah. being blamed for being alive um, being blamed really for uh, being my mother being left with two kids you know you know if we she wasn't we weren't here mm -hmm. she could got on with her life I found it a very emotional book Right, when you self-harmed in the in the, um, oh, the, the subway, in the underpass. Yeah. I used yeah. to run away and used to break glass and cut glass, use legs. Yeah. And just kids to cut myself a lot. I used to spend a lot of time under the underpasses and subways. You see, anyone seeing this away. now, if they're self-harming, they could dissociate with you. Absolutely. Or they might want to come and see you and you can help. And yeah. What's the charity you work for? Well, I'm doing it for the Samaritans, okay, but I actually, when I do my evening of clairvoyances, I actually put self-harming awareness, because yeah, yeah. I want people to be aware of the self-harmers and, and how they're suffering, because they really are suffering. Mm. It's so, if, in, the people that self-harm, to be honest with you, have so much love and emotion inside, mm. and it's usually other people that hurt, and I'm not saying families, yeah. it could be other reasons, bullying and mm. other things, so they'll go home and they have to hurt themselves. Mm and they feel so totally alone. <clears throat> so what I want to do is actually make it people aware that self-harming is not to be taboo. In fact, you know, you should let you put the side, person aside, talk to them nicely, yeah. don't shout at them. Yeah. If you scream and shout at them, they would actually self-harm even more because they blame themselves. And suicide's another thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you realise this, but a lot of suicides as well don't actually want a suicide. It's why they take their pain off just for a little while, yeah. just for a while, and sometimes it just goes too far. Yeah cry for help. It's a cry for help. Do you change the subject a little bit? Yes, of course. Because you mentioned about ghosts, we, we film ghost hunts. Of, I hate that word hunt, you know, but yeah, we've got to let yeah. the public know what we do. Ghost searching, maybe. But, but you've, you've seen ghosts, haven't you? Yeah, of course, yes, yes. Tell me one or two. Well, it's usually a ghost. I mean, um, as a child, we'll go for my nun, yes? Yeah. And solid is you and I. Yeah. Um, and when you're children, you do see solid. Mm. And as you sort of you get older, then to, you, what you see is like an outline, mm. or to me it's like a projection, projection in, image. But um, I've also seen, as I've got older, solid forms, sometimes just the legs, okay, not mm. the whole torso, you know? Why would that be? Do you know, I honestly don't know. I can't answer that one. Because someone else said to me the other week, they saw a pair of legs, and I thought, well, where's the No, one? seriously, no, because it's like, you know, this person ran up my stairs, yeah. literally ran up my stairs, and I was washing up. And I thought it was my son that was in the living room, and yeah. I actually shouted at him. Yeah. And um, I, cause I asked him to do the hoovering. Hmm, yeah. Not proud. So I asked him to do the hoovering for me. Of course, I heard the hoover in the living room. Yeah. And I said, I shouted at Neil. I said, uh, why did you go upstairs and leave the hoover on? And he said, I'm not. I'm in the living room. Mm. Because my brain had seen this man run up my stairs. Mm. But after, when my son walked upstairs, I could see all of my son. Yeah. Even the man was very tall, and I only saw the bottom half of him. Do you think it's someone who lived in that house before him? Oh my god, yeah, well the story goes. Um, when I first moved in, I was very aware that I was being watched all the time. Yeah. And it was a very negative feeling. But because it was a council house, you know, you bigger can't yeah. choose it, you, you had to live there, full yeah. stop. And I was aware all the time, very negative. Things used to go off, music boxes, the toys used to go off. Um, in the middle of the night, um, someone used to sit bang on my bed and used to wake me up. Mm. Now my children were only young and the lights used to go on in the hallway and I'd go out in the hallway and turn them off two or three o'clock in the morning. The, I think the, the most uncomfortable time was when you're half asleep and I went to go to the toilet and somebody actually dragged me in and I automatically thought it was my old son in there right. and he wasn't in there. 
So it was after I found it also the, old, the elderly lady, my daughter, come downstairs and said, Mum, Nanny's on the floor upstairs, dead. No. <laughs> She's got blood coming out of her mouth. That was my daughter. Mm. So, um, of course, I said, don't be silly, darling, you're dreaming, you're dreaming. And then I, the following day, I had actually a knock on the door, you weren't going to believe this, from someone who's come to fumigate my house. Now, I've been living in my house at that time for a year. And when he looked at the chippy on the thing he had, and he said that somebody had, had actually passed in the house, but it was a year ago. Oh, and that's how I knew that this passing in yeah. the house. So I asked my neighbour, and she went, yeah, she said, we used to have an elderly lady, and she'd been dead three months before yeah. anyone found her. But her own son yeah. committed suicide in that house. Uh -huh. And that was the man I feel that ran up my stairs. But he was a very negative man, very negative, because of what things he was doing. And the other thing was, my son at the time was about 14, 15. He woke up in the middle of the night, actually in a lot of pain, and down his back there was big scratch marks. Yeah, oh yes. <laughs> Literally big scratch marks. Yeah. And then there was a time when um, he came down and said, who did you have stay last night, Mum? And I said, I didn't have anyone stay. He said, well, some man, I'm not going to swear, came up and said, wake up your lazy son, so get down and help your mother. Yeah. So it was the same man. Yeah, and this is the same man I saw go up my stairs, just his legs. Now, as a medium, do you switch on and switch off? I, mean, I can do. Because I know some mediums, which I mean, some mediums are fully open and see spirit every day. No, I, I switch off. I can do it can because do. it's something I've been born with. Yeah. You know, I can literally I can sit with somebody and then I can say I've called them. Yeah. yeah. And I call them in my head and then I, I can see them or speak to them. Mm. Or if I'm driving the car, um, I'll ask them, um, you know, who's going to be there. Literally, you know, I can actually see people that I need to give a message to because I know this side is saying to me, this right. person's going to be here yeah. or that person's going to be there. Fantastic. Before we go, <laughs> what's the future hold for Christina Green? I want to carry on my work. Yeah. I want to help as many people as I can. You know, I always say this, if I can't help myself, for as long as I live on this earth plane, I'm going to help as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. And as I said, if it does get to um, the theatres, wonderful. If it does get into the TV, wonderful. But my first priority, and it'll always be, is for the people. Mm. Life after life. Absolutely. Christine, it's been a delight and a pleasure having you as my guest lovely, today. Lovely speaking to you then. And thanks for watching. See you again next week.